here live at the Anaheim Convention Center at the Los Angeles Religious Education Congress. We've just finished the opening ceremony and I have the pleasure of having Donna Pena here as well as John Angotti. Donna is the author of this year's theme song. Donna, how are you? I am great. I'm doing very well. Are you excited? Yes, I am. You wrote this beautiful theme song. You had the entire crowd going. How do you feel? I love it. Well, it's a samba, so it's kind of... How can you not enjoy a samba? It's a great And rhythm. for for those out there in uh, in the web world, what is samba? Samba, it's a type of music that comes out of Brazil. Very, very percussive, a lot of percussion. And it's it's dance music. It's how can you not dance to samba? It just moves. Now, what, this theme about um, incredible abundance, God's overwhelming love for us, how did you get inspired when you wrote those verses, when you wrote um, the, the bridge and all those parts of that song? When I first got the title for the song, it was because every year you have to work with um, the words, the exact words that they're giving you. And it was at first kind of complicated, but then I just thought, incredible abundance, how would you say it? Um, and then I just started working off of how you would say it, how you would sing it, and then just make it as natural as possible. It's just so that it just kind of flows out of you naturally. And you had your daughter singing with you this yeah, year. Yeah, that was fun. She was doing verse three, right? Yeah, she's it's she's got a great voice. It's kind of her first introduction to Congress, and um, and she looks like you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's what everybody tells her. But you know, and and she sounds good, and it's just so great to have her energy there too. And, and she she was there from day one when I got the call to, to write the theme song and listen to all the different tryouts of it. So she's been through all the different phases of incredible abundance. <laughs> And we also have John and Gotti with us. Hi, how are you, John? I'm good. How's it going? It's going good, Alex. We had an early call this morning. We had an early call. I was a little bit late, but I made Just it. Just a little bit. Just a tad. So what brings you to Congress this year and the theme about incredible abundance? Uh, this year we're doing uh, workshops in the Jazz Mass tonight and a big concert tonight with Donna's going to be singing with me at the concert tonight. So uh, it's going to be a, a fun time and we have great weather. It's really good to be out here in California. So this is a, you know, this place gives me life throughout the whole year because you know it really stands for what you know we think church should be springing forth from so now this year's this year's theme um, we had a song this morning um, that basically captured the essence of the people of Haiti um, of people that have gone through trial and tribulation what is, what is this song Beni yo papa what does it say to you about God's love and his mercy and compassion for a world that sometimes feels like th the mercy is not bestowed or is not evident. Well, you know, when we think about, um, uh, when, when we look at Scripture and when Scripture was written and understanding that those people were being persecuted at, uh, you know, during the times of, of the writings of the Scriptures, that, you know, we can relate that to today when the people were suffering, that, you know, God is always with us. You know, this thing that we have called free will, with that comes all kind of other things, and therefore, you know, um, but also comes with us an opportunity for us to choose love, to choose to reach out, you know, so in these times of difficulties, we've seen abundance of love, abundance of grace, where people recognize the fact that we're part of something bigger than just ourselves. And so when we can see that worldly view, even though it's devastation, it, it opens our eyes to the fact that it's not about us, it's about all of us, exactly. and how do we reflect that. So. Exactly, and a lot of your songs um, have, this, have this theme kind of woven throughout. Um, how do you find inspiration? Well, I find inspiration through the everyday experience. You know, I always say worship is a response that you found Jesus in your everyday life. Amen. And in these everyday life experiences, you know, that we run into the difficulties of struggles, whatever they may be, you know, that everybody carries something, that, you know, that's where the songs basically stem from. They're rooted in our relationships with one another and sprung forth into, into what we have as worship, you know. So Catholic music, for what I see, it's, you know, stemmed in liturgical music, but it has expanded into our everyday life. And so it gives us an opportunity to write that way. And you know, Donna Pena, um, you um, have a production, uh, Siga en la Bandera, Follow the Flag, where you basically chronicle uh, the Virgin uh, Mary of Guadalupe. Um, the, the Hispanic community, um, their relationship to Mary and to, and to God, how, how do you feel that the, the Hispanic community sort of embraces or looks into this uh, theme of abundance? Whoa, woo! Um, you know, the, the Latinos have lived on this continent, in, in this country, oh, f way before um, anybody, any, arrived. anybody arrived. And so I think 
you know, the whole thing about abundance is this is um, our land too. We have fought for this land. We have struggled with this land. And so the abundance is, is in what we see that we are able to do. I mean, we need more abundance. I mean, really, right. we, uh, the Latinos need more abundance here. We need more, um, we're not foreigners here. And I think the, as soon as we recognize that this is us, this is our land, this is our people also, that the abundance will come. But I think it's, it's, it's to struggle. And sometimes when you're in the middle of struggle, you don't see the abundance. But, mm. you know, when we start looking at our kids that have the opportunity now for education and our children should be grabbing that because that is what is going to make us a stronger people. So we have this abundance here. Now we just have to recognize it as abundant and take it and run away with it and become a stronger, stronger people. And what about the people of Nashville and the people of, of the, that great South? How do they feel um, that God is abundant and merciful? You mean in Memphis? In Me I'm sorry. That's okay. Nashville, Memphis, Memphis it's all, <laughs> it's closer than it is to here. Sorry. Uh, you know, th there is struggles everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think abundance we find uh, in, in each other. You know, it's not in the material world, you know, we, we, we build these boundaries around and, you know, this world view that we now have is hopefully letting all people realize that how we're all interconnected, you know, we, we, we live inside a specific home, yet the home that we all live in together is really, you know, source and summit of where we get our life from. You know, if we live just in a cave, if we live with just in the boundary, you know, what good is there in that? Oh, did that come from scripture? You know. Right. Right. So, you know, to reach out beyond our boundaries. So, we, you know, I think that our people in Memphis, you know, we struggle with crime. We have a high crime rate. You know, I think a lot of things that uh, we deal with legislation-wise and stuff, I think all of, all of it is a matter of, of faith. It's like, you know, most people have a just-in-case faith right. instead of a full faith. Mm -hmm. Because if you truly trusted what it says on the money, we trust in God, my question is, do we? Right. You know, so... Um, yeah, I think we have a lot of work to do, but you know, one thing I've come to realize that there is a heaven and this isn't it, you know, so, but that's something we're working towards. So. Now, Donna, um, you know, for the, for that cyber community out there, who would you have a message for that may be watching from home, from a location that's far from Los Angeles? What message would you give them today? I, I would just say to, um, take pride in, in who you are and know your, your history. Take pride in, in who you are, and and um, there's a lot of faith in in our in our past. And you know, you were talking about before about La Virgen de Guadalupe, and she's brought us um, through a lot. And to to look at what she represents, and to take pride in that, and to find within that the compassion for each other to look at each other and say we are from the same you know we are the same and to take compassion for each other to look at each other and and love each other for who we are for what we've been through and there's a line in the play that I that I like to refer to it where it says you know our we have traveled so hard and so long our bloodline and it's just time to um, to not let it let it be spilled out in the streets so it's time to just you know, let, let that be um, something that we cherish and carry with us um, through life. What's going to be happening, uh, Donna, during this Congress that you think people should know about or that they should be looking forward to as, as this webcast mm -hmm. sort of unfolds before their eyes? Well, I think it's a great way to get people to um, introduce them to what happens here and to see that there is a community like huge, way beyond their, their little communities in, in, you know, like my little community. There's, it's something, there's something bigger that you can be a part of and that you what can see. What is your little community? In, in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, Shout out to St. Paul. St. Paul, Minnesota, Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, La Iglesia de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe. And it's, it's um, a church that has taught me um, so much of what I do and who I am. Um, and I think if communities continue to do that, I mean, it's, it's great. Now, John, you've been to uh, many, many events, many rallies, many uh, congresses, if, if we can pluralize the word. What is, what's so special about the Los Angeles Religious Education Congress? What is it about this, this space that becomes sacred these three days that, that sort of nourishes us and gives us the, the impetus to, to move ahead? What is it about this space? This space, you know, when we talk about church documents, it says that our worship is a, a foretaste of the heavenly worship of which we are invited. This, to me, gives us a, a vision of what heaven is. 
because here we get a chance to dream. Amen. Here we get a chance to think outside the box. Here we get to do things that, you know, in most places, when, you know, that's one of the struggles that people have when they go back to their play. They go, how do we reproduce this, you know? Here we give people ideas and opportunities to, to, to surround the worship and surround our, our, our lives as Catholic folks and, and, and make it better and make it bigger because it has to be effective because what we do on Sunday changes the world. I don't know if people recognize that, but when you touch somebody in such a way that helps them to recognize God in their everyday lived experience, and they keep themselves from either killing themselves or killing somebody else, which mm. could be use of tongue or whatever, mm. you know, that then all of a sudden you recognize that from this place, we change the world. Amen. And it's that big and it's that And it's awesome. incredible, incredible. 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 Abundancia. Abundancia. <laughs> Well, brothers and sisters and everybody out there in the cyber world, this has been a great interview. I thank Donna Pena and I thank John and Gotti. They're wonderful ministers of the Lord. They're here with us. We thank their families and we thank everything they do. God bless you and we're off to the arena.